This is uh, lesson 3.1, Foundations of Math 30. Uh, this is the textbook. I'll have the textbook uh, up on the screen of digital copy of the textbook. Um, you will need to have your textbooks here at every class. I know you don't have them today. This is your first, first day. And we're starting th this course at, uh, on section 3.1. But um, I will um, encourage you to follow along in your text when you get it. Okay, so chapter 3 is all about sets and set notation. Okay? Now, we're going to find out what set notation is and what sets are. This is a kind of a, a everyday life kind of thing. There are lots of sets that we deal with every day in life, and um, uh, there are subsets. We realize that some sets don't overlap at all. We realize that some sets uh, do. Um, you know, for example, um, this, this set right here of students in this classroom, Foundations of Math 30 uh, students, right? Now, there is a subset of that set, uh, that's a set within that set, that they are the, you know, the um, male students of the Foundations of Math 30 in this class. And so you guys would be a subset and so on. Now we're going to talk about these definitions mainly today. So I'm going to get you to, in your notebooks, um, just copy out uh, either word for word or just in your own words. What do we have? Notebook? Nothing? Yeah, Nothing? No, anything? No. Oh. Well, I understand you don't have a text, but you're going to want to borrow a piece of paper and a pen. And, uh, okay, good. So a set, a collection of distinguishable objects, for example, the set of whole numbers is, and so on. So a, a set of distinguishable objects, okay? So objects that are uh, distinct from one another. And like I said, this, uh, this example here, whole numbers, would be all of the positive integers and a zero. So zero, one, two, three, and of course four, five, six, seven, eight. No decimals, no fractions, no negatives going on forever. That's what these three dots mean. Okay? So that is an example of a set. It's just a collection of objects. A universal set. You'll hear me talk about the universal set. This is the set of all the elements, okay? And elements are objects within a set, that's down here, elements, ob an object in a set. So it's the set of all of these objects in a set under consideration for a particular context. So let's just say in my first example there, um, the students in Foundations of Math 30, right, in period one here. This is the universal set. And everything we're going to talk about, all of the other subsets and sets inside of that, um, that's going to be the, the, the sample space. That's everything. And then we're going to talk about things within that. Okay? So it's the universal set. It's everything that we're considering for a particular type of question. Okay? So here's an example. The set of digits, okay, D, is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's an example of a universal set. Those are all the digits that exist. Okay? Numbers can be formed from those digits. There are no other digits in existence. That's the universal set. That's everything that we're talking about, okay, for this example. All right. All right. Um, I mentioned already that an element is a specific object in a set. So um, one is an element in this set of digits. Six is an element in this set of digits, okay? So, so there's a set, and then all the things that make up the set are the elements. And you think about the periodic table of elements, which I have a chart on the wall over there, okay? Those are the basic um, substances that make up all of the other compounds and substances in existence, right? Those are the basic elements. So it's elementary, it's basic, okay? Okay, I mentioned this word as well, subset. I'll just go down to subset here. So a subset is, and if we break apart that word a little bit, you know, sub means kind of within, and then set. So something, a set within a set, really is what a subset is, right? So it's a set whose elements all belong to another set. For example, the set of odd digits. So if we look at this example here, the digits, right? These are all digits that are in existence, 0 to 9. The set of odd digits, not odd numbers, but odd digits, would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. All of those elements, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, are inside a larger set. So they're a subset. 
as I mentioned here in this class, Foundations of Math uh, 30 students. We have a subset of male Foundations of Math 30 students, right? That's a subset that's inside the larger set. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. So we're just, just getting some terminology here. All right, uh, the compliment. Um, now, this is different than the, hey, you look really nice today, compliment. It's different than that. This is a math term, the compliment, and it's, I think it's spelt a little bit differently as well. So the complement is all elements of a universal set that do not belong to a subset, okay? So for example, if we go back to this subset, odd digits, the complement of O, uh, designated by O prime, that's a little, it's like just a little, it's not an apostrophe, it's just a little tick mark there. That's a prime symbol. We use that a lot in calculus, for those of you that were in calculus last semester. Um, that means everything that's not in this set. So if O is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, everything that is not in O, but still a part of the universal set, would be the numbers that aren't listed, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So notice, these would be the ones that we didn't mention in the odd, right? The complement, the ones that don't have those arrows to them. That's complement. Everybody got that? Any questions? Okay, the empty set. All right, the empty set. Now, if we're talking about an empty set, that means a set that has no elements in it. <clears throat> so let's say if we're talking about math um, examples that they have here, the set of odd numbers that are divisible by 2. Okay, There are no odd numbers that are evenly divisible by 2. Okay, So the definition of an even number is that it is divisible by 2. The definition of an odd number is that it's an even number plus 1. So it's not divisible by 2 evenly. Okay. Um, decimals don't count when you get an answer of a decimal. That it means it's not evenly divisible. So, um, you know, I think in here, you guys are all in grade 12, I believe, right? All just all grade 12 students. So the empty set would be um, the students that are in grade 9 in Foundations of Math 30 this semester. That's an empty set. There are none. Okay? So just, it's a set, and you can state any set you want, right? Um, but if there's no elements in it, it's just called an empty set. And it's denoted by, um, basically, it's kind of like, you, you can use these brackets, these funny braces, and just leave it blank in there, so nothing's in there. Or you can write this sort of zero with a slash through it, okay? So those are the representations for an empty set. Okay, any questions? All right, dis disjoint. Uh, two or more sets having no elements in common. Okay, so if we have two sets of things and there are no elements that exist in both sets or both categories, right? The sets are kind of like categories, right? If you think about that. So the set of odd integers and the set of even integers. Those would be disjoint sets because there's no number that would be in both categories at the same time. Okay, that's what that means. So disjoint. They are disjointed, right? Okay? Um, think, about, think about a joint, a shoulder, your arm and your shoulder, your socket or whatever. And if it's, you know, if it's separated, it's disjointed. Okay? So it's come apart. So they're, they're separate. Okay? Disjoint sets. So I'll just highlight that. So no elements in common. Okay, um, another thing we need to uh, know about here is the finite set. Okay, so if you hear this mentioned or you read this in your textbook, this chapter, the finite set, it basically means it's a set of countable number of elements. So inside a set, if there is a countable number of elements, then it's a finite set. And that's opposed to an infinite or infinite set, right? Uh, I think you understand what infinite means. It means it's uncountable, okay? Something that's infinite is uncountable. So an example here would be the set of natural numbers, which starts at 1 and then goes to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and all the way up. There's no decimals, no fractions, no negatives, no zero, okay? But it does continue on without end. So that's an infinite set. 
if you name any natural number, we could always add one to it, and you'd have another one. So it's, it's not ending. The set of digits, though, right, from, and I'm just going to move back up here for a second. The set of digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, that's a finite set, okay, a digit. So digits make up numbers. Okay, any questions here so far? Yes? Why is the notation for infinite set is n? Uh, no, it's not n. This is the set of natural numbers. Oh. Yeah. No, the infinite set is not an n, but this n is for the set of natural numbers. Yeah. You. Yeah, you're welcome. There could be lots of different sets that would be um, uh, inf infinite. And then uh, here, so the back to the finite then, uh, the set of even numbers less than 10, okay? So, so that's, that's just don't, uh, noted as E for even. And then that's, uh, it only has four elements in it. So that's a finite set, okay? So when you see the three dots here like that, that means it keeps going on forever, infinite set. Okay? Any other questions here so far? All right. Uh, mutually exclusive. Okay, so this is, this is our last definition. I am going to give you some notation, just real briefly here. Uh, one more bit of notation, but mutually exclusive. Okay, so two or more events that cannot occur at the same time. Now, this is a little bit different than disjoint sets. Um, mutually exclusive talks about um, events happening. So let's say we... Roll, um, roll a die, a six-sided die, and I don't have one right here, but if we were to roll it, okay, the event of rolling a two and rolling a six would be mutually exclusive. You, you cannot roll both of them at the same time, okay? So if you had two as a set and six as a set, those would be disjoint sets, but mutually exclusive usually refers to an event or something that happens that cannot happen at the same time. So for example, if you are in this classroom right now, the event that you are also in the classroom across the street, those would be mutually exclusive. You can only have one of those at a time. You know what I mean? You can't be in two different rooms at, at once. Okay? So it's kind of like disjoint, but disjoint are talking about two sets that don't have any elements in common. Mutually exclusive are talking about two events that can occur at the same time. So here's the example. They give the sun rising, and the sun setting, okay? Two events that will happen uh, for us every day, but they don't happen at the same time. They're, they're mutually exclusive. One can't happen at the same time as the other. All right. So um, I, I, I don't know if this is on here, but I just saw this in my notes here, and I want to make sure that... Oh, yeah, okay. It is on here, but I didn't outline it, so I'm just going to go back to subset here. And you'll see this notation. Okay, this, this is not a C. It's, um, it's actually just a symbol. So if, um, if we have O, okay, and if it's a subset of something else, you'll see this little symbol that kind of looks like a C, but it's not a C. It's really close. It's not OCD. It's O is a subset of D. <laughs> o is a subset of D, and that's the, that's the notation there. Okay? So similar to other notations there with the empty set, those are the other two things, and this, this prime here. So that's complement. This is O is a subset of D. That's notation there. And then this is an empty set notation also, so is this. Okay? All right. Any questions here so far? Yep. Okay. Now, um, yeah, that assignment here, um, the assignments that sometimes will show up on the notes, because I've used these notes before, may not be your assignment for, for the day. We'll always go back to Google Classroom for that. Um, but uh, anyways, I want to go, you can jot that down if you want, but I'll come back to it. If we go back to the textbook here, um, one of the key features of the textbook, when you get your textbooks, will be that uh, so they have like little things like this little boxes where there's really important information and at the end of each section so there's examples that you can look back to again more notation um, but at the end of each section after all the teaching and examples and stuff that you'd see in the textbook 
they have this right here in summary. So this actually is really important, and I will outline this pretty much every class. Um, but this is sort of a, an outline, uh, the highlights of the lesson. And so all of the important things really should be in here. The key ideas and the need to know stuff, okay? So, um, for example, one of the things that we haven't come across here yet is this, and I want to talk about this at the very end, but you'll see some of the notation, all the little notes here, okay? And the last thing that I want to talk about in this lesson is something called Venn diagrams, which you're going to see. How many of you have heard of Venn diagrams before? Okay, yeah? So uh, this would be a Venn diagram, and it would sort of be a graphical, visual representation of where all the elements are in the set and subsets and different things like that. And so the universal set would be this larger box. Everything that's in here, all the elements that would, would be in the universal set would be in here somewhere. A would be a subset of U. And of course, uh, A complement would be everything that's not inside the group of A, the category of A. So everything that would fit in any other space outside the circle. So what that means right here is that um, the number of elements, and this little N there, that means the number of elements. So you're not actually listing the element names. This is just the number of elements. The number of elements plus the number of elements that are not in that set would equal the number of elements in total. So once again, uh, the number of elements in set A plus the number of elements that are not in set A would be all the elements that are in the universal set, the number of them, okay? When two sets uh, are disjoint, let's say A and B, okay, and I'm just going to make a little drawing here. Let's see, I'll clip this. Back into the notes here. Let's see if I can find some space. Computer's frozen. Okay, I think it'll come up here soon. Okay, so let's say we have um, we have F here and V. <laughs> Doesn't look okay. F and V, those two would be disjoint sets. See that? There's no overlap in those circles in the Venn diagram. So those are disjoint, F and V. And so the number of elements in F or in V would be the sum of all the elements there. Okay? And that's what that last little bit is saying. And yeah, we just have a little computer stutter here. Okay? So this is what it looks like there. The number of elements in A or B would be the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B. And that's when they are two different circles that don't overlap. Okay? We'll say A and B. All right. So um, that's the end of this lesson. And so let's go to Google Classroom here. Again, um, for those of you who came late here, Google Classroom uh, on your syllabus, uh, which I'll talk to the two of you afterwards uh, that came a little late. Uh, on your syllabus, you have the code for getting into Google Classroom, and on there you would also have all the uh, homework and the video, the attachment for the videos there. All right, um, that all in one place. So one, two, four, and thirteen would be your assignment for three point one. So you might want to write that one down. We have about five minutes of class left, so one, two, four, and thirteen is your assignment for today. I know you don't have uh, textbooks, so what I'll do is I'll put the textbook back up. And here's also a little bit of help with number one later if you need it. Yes. Oh, it says it, it asks, is it? It says, is f prime equal to v? Okay. What's the question? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Um, so you need to, yeah, you'll do whatever you can because you're going to be. You're missing what? Three days? One, two, three. You're missing three. 
three classes. So yeah, so that's why I, that's why I put everything up on Google Classroom for you. So yeah, you're going to be. I mean, we'll probably have three one, maybe the three three done by the time you get back by next Monday. So yeah, there'll be there'll be a lot that you're missing. So you will have to kind of. Um, uh, yeah, you will have to catch up as much as you can. But Audrey and Boy Beach, just come up here before you leave. What is